Welcome back everybody, Automotive Inc. here. Thank you for being here. If you're new to the channel, look over there in the corner and smash that subscribe button for me at the end of the video. Like, again guys, I got tons of great content on the channel and uh, I've been dying and dying and dying and waiting to show you what we're gonna add to the channel next. And so here we are. So lots of requests and everything guys. If you guys have seen any of the HD content, you guys know that I believe that gas is right up there now with diesels. And um, I think that they cover a lot of bases for a lot of us and save us all the headache of that EPA BS. So I've pretty much conquered everything we can this year until the 24 Ford comes out. Uh, the 24 Chevy's already been on the channel and we just had a 24 Ram, which in far is in my books guys, it did not add up to the expectations of what I was hoping to get. Now, guys, again, I've driven lots of trucks. I'm a professional truck driver. I've logged 4 million plus miles safely in all kinds of vehicles and all kinds of classes of trucks and cars. And so when I bring out my opinion, uh, and that's what I'm trying to share with you guys, is I'm trying to give you guys uh, something to open your mind to the possibilities of things. Obviously, my opinion is not the end all, but no matter what, if I did anything that said anything bad about the Ram, then the Ram people that love Rams came off and said, well, my Ram is the best, guys. Again, if you love a certain brand, then that's great. But what happens when that certain brand fails you? you we only have really three choices of heavy-duty trucks. Now, in other terms, in the in the light-duty or compact trucks, you have more options. In the half-tons, you have more options. Um, but at the end of the day, it's all about trying to find the best one for the job. And I will tell you this, guys, none of us are buying large trucks for fuel economy. None of us are buying them for ride. We all know that trucks ride rougher than cars and everything like that. And no matter what I say is half the people say, no, I love the ride of my truck. I want it to feel like my spleen's blowing out my throat and I hate fuel. That's why I like burning so much of it. Hey man, whatever floats your boat. But what if you could have a truck that had good ride and actually had really good fuel economy. I actually enjoy all of those things. One thing I don't enjoy though is the Ram and the and the Duramax and the Ford having to have all these regens and stuff. But that's not their fault. That's that's the EPA restrictions and whatnot. But when we think about it, I had a large request from a lot of people saying that, hey, we appreciate that, those heavy duty guys like yourself and everybody else, that, that's great that they're doing that, but what about us guys that aren't towing you know, 10 plus? What about us guys that have the 7,500 pound trailers? What about the guys that you know don't think we need a diesel? Or maybe we do, so here I am guys going to answer a few questions. So I took the opportunity, I wasn't happy with the Ram, so I decided that that thing was going to move and that's gone. We do have a special order in on a Chevy, a 24 Chevy and we do have a uh, order in on a 24 Godzilla so I think those are gonna be two good opportunities for us to come in with uh, when we come back to the HD market here in about seven months but for the rest of us that are using uh, pickups for commuters or using them as to haul the family haulers I mean if you look back in the day guys most older trucks had the extended cab or just a regular cab configuration they did have some crew cabs but the majority of them were just extended cabs we they would smash people in them but those trucks were made for hauling Fast forward to now, people are using pickups, even HD diesel one tons. I see people driving them every day of the school and I know they're too pretty looking, they're too clean, that they're not out pulling heavy trailers every day. This is somebody's commuter and that's fine, although I think that's gonna cause problems. So where did the channel need to go, guys? Well, after having a faux pas with the Ram, I knew it wasn't going to be in Ram's court. Uh, reason being is this 23 will be the end-ish of the 5.7 Hemi. Uh, they're gonna bring out the hurricane When it comes to the Chevy Silverado, we just had a Chevy Silverado. I'm not a fan of That cylinder deactivation whatever each brand wants to call it So I'm gonna stay away from anything like that We just did a diesel and when it comes to diesels again guys I try and steer away from them for most people because again the idea That people are using these as their commuters. That's where the diesels die if you're not towing, if you're not driving down, even driving down the highway in the Ram, it needed a regen, and that was all highway miles. So, I mean, I was kind of blown away about that. But that's going to be everything with all the diesels. We have the new Tundra with the new um, kind of mild hybrid, if you will, uh, V8, or sorry, V6. It's twin turbo, already having problems. We have the good old Titan that's dead at the end of this year, so that didn't make a lot of sense. The little 3 liter Duramax, that's fine, but again, if I can stay away from diesel and accomplish the same job, then I want to do that. And now, right now, where I live, guys, diesel is $1 more a gallon. 
So that left us one option. Heading back to the half ton market. We are gonna do that for a little bit, guys. We're gonna do some towing. We're gonna do some checking up. We are gonna do a lot of different things with a half ton to show the usability of a pickup now instead of like an SUV. So when people think, well, luxury car, geez, guys, some of these half ton trucks are so beautiful and tricked out that they're luxury cars. But they give you the ability to put a dirt bike in the back or put a whole sofa or tow a trailer or whatever that those other cars can't do. But it wasn't just about bringing a half ton here. Remember when I said back at the beginning, guys, that we were going to talk about what if we could have good ride? What if we could have good fuel economy? Those things usually don't go together. And again, that's not the reason why I bought it, but I wanted to try something new. So with the great deals, if you guys didn't see the video the other day, the great deals that we uh, had, I am actually going to try the first time in my life. I've, I've always wanted to know about it. I've always wanted to know about hybrids. I've loved them. I've, I've just always been scared to death about owning one because I don't believe full electric is going to work anytime soon. And I don't think it's a good buy um, unless you're just the person that drives short commutes and has to plenty of time to charge that beast and you're not towing a lot because those things are going to suck the battery down and in the cold, they're going to be sucked down even worse so it's not going to work. So with the deals going on at Ford, guys, we are introducing Captain. This is the new truck to the channel. It is a 2023 Ford F-150, and yes, guys, you said it right. Jeremy's crazy, this is gonna be nuts. It is the power boost, guys. This is the most powerful non-Raptor half-ton pickup in Ford segment. We are talking 430 horsepower, 570 pounds of torque. It's unbelievable. Now, a lot of people say that the reason why I say Chevy has the best ride is because of the independent front suspension. I think we all can agree on that. That is how Chevy pulls the, the ride off. Now, people may say, well, it's not as dependable. Guys, Ford's been running independent front suspension in their half ton for a long time. They even had that little short jaunt with a light duty three quarter ton in the, what, the late 90s when it looked just like the half ton and it had the same suspension. Didn't go over well with the with the hardcore fanatics, and there are some people that are always going to say, no matter what, that the solid front axle is better than anything. Okay, that's fine. The Raptor doesn't have a solid front axle. Uh, most of the high-performance stuff this, these days doesn't have a front axle. That's a debate we're not talking about here. But what this power boost does, guys, what this truck does is something that really nobody else is touching. This is a full hybrid engine. And I will do a separate video on the differences between a 24 and a 23, guys. But all in all, right now with the deals going through Ford, I end up getting almost $12,000 off this pickup. Now you're probably sitting back saying, well, Jeremy, so Captain's just an XLT. Well, that's kind of a loser truck. Not for me. For me, and for most of my watchers, actually, they've actually said that they enjoy some creature amenities, but don't need the leather, don't need all the fancy stuff. And, you know, I'm the same way. There are some creature amenities. Let's go look at the window sticker. Here is the window sticker. So guys, we have a 2023 F-150 Super Crew. This is the baby box or the five and a half. Carbonized gray, 3.5 power boost, full hybrid. So again, as you can see right here, the things that I really love that we get is the, uh, the automatic high beams. That is important to me. I love that feature. And then as you cruise over here, you can see that we got a lot of great stuff. You do get um, the Ford app for life if you're the original owner, so that's good. The 302A package, which is the XLT, uh, auto temp control, SYNC 4, which SYNC 4 is a lot better than the SYNC 3. The LED side mirror spot lamps, remote vehicle start. And then we have the hybrid engine at $44.95. We got 20 inch wheels, 373, the 7350 GVWR package. Um, then we cruise down here. It does have the removal of the auto start, which is fantastic. Trailer tow package, which gives you integrated trailer brake control and the pro trailer back assist, which we'll play that at some point, guys. The XLT Sport Appearance package and the 20 inch wheels. Now, this is not what I paid, guys. You cruise over here, you can see that we have discount, discount, total savings of this. We cruise over here. Original MSRP is 62050. So that is the window sticker, guys. Again, they do rate this truck at 23 City, 23 Highway. And you might be thinking, what the heck? That doesn't make any sense. But we'll get back to that.
took a look at the window sticker, you guys might be thinking, wow, you know, 63K-ish seems like a lot for a half-ton pickup. Well, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you in here what this truck came with, what it has, and everything like that, and my initial thoughts on it. We're gonna have tons of content coming up, guys, because this thing, it just blows my mind. And I wanted to get a few hundred miles on it before I came at you guys with anything, because, well, hell, we, start, we had established a problem on the Ram in less than a thousand miles. You know, it was actually a couple hundred miles in, I found the leak on the, uh, the transfer case. So I wanted to get in here, get in here and see if my initial thoughts were as good as I was hoping. I had a lot of hope for this truck. Now, this is the setup. It is a twin turbo 3.5. Again, 430 horsepower, 570 pounds torque. This is more horsepower than last year's Godzilla, a big old V8. We have our hybrid stuff over here. And what this truck has in it with the 373, it allows us up to 11,000 pounds of towing. Now, with a half ton, do I recommend 11,000 pounds of towing? Well, that's subjective because there's going to be some people that sit back and tell me, yeah, I would tow that every day of the week. Now, because this has the baby box and it does have that, the fifth wheel gooseneck is rated at 8,500 pounds. So you're looking at a really, really small fifth wheel if you're going to go that direction. But really, these the half ton trucks for me are not fifth wheel pullers. But there are a lot of tow behind guys, a lot of quad guys, a lot of guys that just don't, they can get more bang for their buck in a, in a little bit smaller tow behind. But I mean, they make some monster sized tow behinds that are only like 7,900 pounds. And granted, the length of that's gonna be pretty big, but it is what it is when it comes to things, and you'll have to decide that. But with weight distributing hitches, this has almost 2,300 pounds of payload, just in this version. And uh, you know, it, it, it to me, it is a fantastic setup, and if I could actually lessen my trailers, this truck would be the one that I would be keeping over at, over at HD if I didn't need the weight. I currently have those two big trailers and I need to tow the weight. I don't need a diesel, and you don't need a diesel, and you don't need to go to the little Duramax to get it because this truck rides exceptional. All right, guys, so being the sport, we have the LED lights up front here. Or LEDs, like they call it a C clamp or whatnot. For 24, this changed a little bit and the actual headlight configuration changed a smidge. That'll be a later video. We have the uh, no chrome grill. We have 20 inch metallic gray wheels. This XLT with the sport package, it did get the little platform running boards that are black. The thing I love about it, guys, is no chrome, nothing like that. All right. It does have a chrome tip on it, but that was just part of this package. It already had it on it. I wanted these upgraded mirrors, so they have the zone lighting. That's like everything else, like Chevy and everybody else has. It does have tons of standard safety tech. If you saw all that right there on the uh, actual window sticker, guys, we have so much safety tech. It's fantastic. Now, you guys might be thinking, well, the FX4 package is a little bit better. The FX, FX4 package is good for a few reasons. I don't off-road, so I'm not overly worried about it. We got uh, our bliss sensors down here, guys. The F-150 stamped in the tailgate. We do not have a tailgate stamp on this. This was a uh, dealer ordered uh, truck, so nothing crazy with that. That's a 300 some odd dollar option. I would definitely recommend it. Now this does have a 2.4 kW um, power source on here, so you guys can run a microwave, a TV, a TV, and a game, bo or a game station. Um, we will have videos for the LED bed lighting. We'll put that in. I'll sh I have a video coming on the box link. I installed that because this, again, was a more basic truck. It did just have the stamped holes, but not any of the actual tie downs actually in here. We have the LED third brake light. And now this is where it comes into it, guys. So for an XLT, I love this keypad. I love it. It's fantastic. To lock, unlock, leave your keys in there, hide your keys in there, lock it, and everything like that. We have keyless entry, so touch here, push here to lock it. Push here to unlock it and welcome home. So you guys are going to notice right away, if you have a 23 Super Duty, this is the interior. Why they didn't just do this exact interior, I don't know, but it's it's identical other than this little cutout. Obviously the gauges changed, but I'm going to talk about these beautiful gauges here in just a second, guys. We have our power driver's seat with lumbar power passenger seat with lumbar we have our 12 inch connected navigation we have beautiful gauges here they're not all uh, lcd screen like the more up trim models but even the more up trim f-150 models have prettier and better more informed gauges than to say the other one we got uh, f-150 mats in here tons of storage in the console good uh, array of stuff here we have our little american flag in boston here go america love that we have our little map 
in the door panels here. Tons of door pocket storage. Love the storage in a Ford. It's fantastic. All soft stuff. Again, why they didn't just go with this material in the in the Super Duty, uh, I'm a little surprised. Uh, this pattern, this texture, everything is perfect. We get in the back seat, guys. Again, I'll have an install video on these uh, door sill covers. But I mean, look at the storage we have here, guys. Tons of cup holders, everything like that. Extra cup holders here. Every power point you need, a USB, USB-C, 12 volt, and an actual uh, 120. Fantastic, we got good map pockets. They're actually deep. I noticed in the RAM, they were pretty tight here after putting using them for a few weeks. This started bulging out, wouldn't go back. If we tip up, the seat guys you do get a mini storage in the xlt which is awesome you know so it's just kind of nice to have that little bunch of storage and it goes way back in there the other side has the uh inverter in it so it does take up a little bit of the storage there but look at this full flat this this not a full flat this full flat floor guys versus the ram crew cab this is fantastic the chevy's is almost 100 percent flat but in here guys you can actually fit a full-size human in the middle so when you get in here guys again i am 6'2 i got my seat adjusted where i need it i got at least six inches there in the ram guys i tried to show you where the uh, middle seat was i'll kick my tissue box out of here i got enough leg room to actually sit comfortably there's no bulge in my back from the armrest and it's fantastic with no hump it makes the middle person not hate life riding in your truck now look at this beautiful screen guys again we have just a beautiful 75th anniversary. I mean, these are all kind of gimmicky things, but I love it. I love the look. I love the feel. Everything like that. We cruise over here, guys. And if I and if I look over here, guys, you get this beautiful, like, just wake-up screen, everything like that. But here's the depth of it. We have our tack. We have our speedo. Then you have a crystal screen in, in the middle. It's just a beautiful, depthful view versus the other ones. Um, once we fire this guy up, so if we reach over here, we push the start button. Again, hybrid, guys. So the engine's running. It's ready to rock and roll. There is your gauges. Um, just beautiful. And we'll go more over in depth all of these different modes. This would have been huge for them to just follow this. They had this in the Super Duties already. Maybe just tweak it, maybe everything like that. We come over here, we have a great 12 inch screen. You have tons of storage down here, guys. Tons of storage here, tons of storage here. If you got the uh, productivity lap thing, you can fold up your actual shifter. And again, we're gonna have in-depth videos here, guys, when it comes to the other stuff. But when we come over here, the intuitiveness of it, this system, recognizes my country boy twang it's a beautiful simple screen to use and it has tons of information at your fingertips again guys we have our upper glove box just like the super duties again why they didn't just copy it i don't know but this is what we're getting for 24 in the interior guys if you wanted to wait for 24 we're not getting a bump in payload we're not getting a huge bump in any in engine numbers we're not getting a bump in anything the real big changes for 24 again we'll do a video on it but right now, the deal you can get, if you're a half-tonner and you need a truck and you want good ride quality and you want fuel economy, which we're going to talk about that again in just a minute, it's fantastic. It's insane. I don't even understand why somebody would pass this up. Now, there's a lot of people that bang on the EcoBoost, guys. There's a lot of guys that hate it. Um, they say it's complete trash. I would never have a V6. The guys, that is the, that is the progression is they're trying to outmode engines altogether. That's why they're making electric ones. So at the end of the day... Uh, this the EcoBoost engine's been around for quite a while, and it's been tried and true. The you know Toyota Impeccable, their their iForce V8 was was brilliant towards the end. I mean, it was so reliable, pretty much its whole life. But I mean, at the end of the day, you look at it like this new turbos are the Toyota. We get it figured out. They'll get it figured out. They'll get it figured out. They put a lot of money into this. But at the end of the day, like I said, that's even there. They're out of the V8 mode. They're out of everything. Chevy still has a couple of their dinosaur ones, um, but those aren't even as powerful as this bad boy. And I've driven tons of EcoBoost, guys. I had a 2.7 EcoBoost. It was fantastic on fuel. It was a blast to drive. It was excellent. It was so good in every respect. I love my F-150 a ton. I've had Silverados and I've had Ram 1500s. And by far, the F-150 with the back seat room, the interior room, the ride, and everything has been fantastic. And the 2.7 is a great engine. That is the, the new standard engine, which is good. The old 3.5 was just kind of hmm, unimpressing, but... You know, here we are in 23, you don't have to go to a 24 to get all of this stuff and get one hell of a deal and a good deal on interest rates. Now let's finish up the interior, guys. 
So if we look over here, guys, we have everything we need. We have LED ambient lighting. It is in a bluish tone at night. Very pretty for me. Uh, Non-lit uh, makeup mirrors. So if your wife likes to use those or, well, you guys like to use them, then feel free. Uh, sunglass holder. No upfitter switches. Auto dim rear view mirror. Huge console in here, guys. Huge. Just huge. And it is lit. If you got the productivity thing, there'll be a handle here. You fold that bad boy down, it flips over here, and you're good to go. We got dual zone climate control, heated seats, and again, that is fantastic for an XLT. Now, this whole time I've been talking to you, the truck's been running on electricity. And here's what I like about a hybrid. This is why it's always, always intrigued me. I don't have to have any range anxiety. If the electric engine never kicks uh, kicks into work because I've always you're always into it and pounding it and driving it hard, then you don't have to worry about charging it. It charges itself with brake input, good brake input. It's going to have eco coaches, um, and it's going to regen with the alternator. It's going to recharge with that. In addition to that, guys, you have a button right here that actually will let you uh, turn on all the power outlets in the vehicle without the truck accessory key being on. So that in itself is fantastic. Everybody I talk to that owns a certain Tesla after a few years, they start having this built-in, I can't go that far because they don't want to push it or the battery is already depleting. Well, Ford gives you an excellent warranty on these batteries. Um, I end up getting a 10-year warranty on them, although I probably... I don't know if I'll have the truck that long because that's the whole point of the channel is to keep cycling. But I hope that this truck goes to me and my family because it is freaking fantastic. It's freaking fantastic. I tell you, I, I, I've brought over the car enthusiast. He's he's taking it for a dri drive and spent some time in it. And then he's going to come back over. We're going to do a video because I want people to experience the excellence of this pickup. The seats in the Chevy are the firmest of the three, the big three guys. And I think they're they're about as firm as the Toyota and uh, and everything like that. The Ford mixes good, excellent seat comfort, but usually their truck rides rougher. Well, not with the independent front suspension, okay? So, now, look down here, guys. It has been in electric mode this whole time. I'm nice and warm. I've got the air conditioner going. And as long as you feather your drive input, guys, it stays in electric. Now, you remember the window sticker where it said it got 23 or whatever, 24 or whatever? It is seamless on its abilities to, to drive. Right there, we kick into the electric, we're good to go, and no sweat there. Now, I want to tell you guys something. When I bought the truck, they filled it up and it said I had 501 miles till empty. So funny story is, I like driving as easy as I possibly can, you know, and get the best fuel economy I can. I like tricking the system into going into the hybrid mode as much as I possibly can. What that means is, is if you put on, push on the brake or you're coasting, eventually it goes into the hybrid uh, mode and basically runs on that. If you put it in eco mode, it will change the throttle responses, giving you even better hybrid control. So you can get the system to kick into hybrid even better and even more. So it's freaking awesome. So I got the truck, like I said, it had 501 till empty. I drove it home. I drove it over the next few days in the city, uh, really not much on the highway. On the highway, it said I was getting 30 miles a gallon between, uh, overall, totality was 30 miles a gallon. Driving the speed limit, driving everything. I've been driving it now for almost two weeks. The car enthusiast came over, he drove it. And it went down here and there to like 492. I haven't put a drop of fuel in this, check this out. It is now up to 527 miles till empty, saying I'm averaging about 24 miles the gallon. So that is overall, guys. That is between the gas and electric. And again, you manipulating your driving habits can drive quite a while in just hybrid mode. And because it's so seamless, you don't know notice when it's kicking on to that big twin turbo V6. And it's got a good sound. Even when it's in hybrid mode, it almost sounds like the engine's running. It makes no freaking sense. I know they're not piping sound into it. Maybe it's the tires, maybe whatever. But it does still just sound awesome. And the ride quality in here and the cabin comfort and cabin quietness is fantastic. I will break down everything in here because, again, guys, this is your Super Duty interior. This is your, you, or sorry, your uh, Sync 4 system that you're going to get with the big 12-inch screen. This is... This is what you're getting. It's 
what every manufacturer does. They usually pipe out their half ton, and if it plays out good, then that's how their heavy duty truck uh, comes out next. Ram, on the other hand, has just kind of just said, nah, we're just gonna leave it the old school Ram, uh, and, and it'll sell, and people are still buying it, so it doesn't really matter, right? So now I'm gonna pull in, and I'm going to top off the tank for the first time, and I'm gonna calculate and see what I'm actually getting. That will actually be in the next video, guys. So I wanted to introduce you to Captain, our new uh, channel truck, if you will. And again, as far as I'm concerned, with, after seeing what the changes are for 24, to me, there's no advantage to going to a 24 because this is superb. This truck last year made up 20% of Ford's F-150 sales, the power boost setup. I don't see any reason why you would want any other setup, period, in a, in a pickup because this makes the most sense. This is more powerful than the big V8s. It's more powerful than Kong. It's more powerful than that. And although it's not set up to tow that much, when people are sitting there thinking about power and the ability to go up the mountains with a half ton truck, I think we're there. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the introduction to Captain. Uh, I, I hope that you'll subscribe because we got all kinds of accessory videos that are popping up and we're gonna be putting on this truck, getting it ready. I'm gonna get try and find in, uh, about 10,000 pounds to tow behind this bad boy. Uh, again, I won't ever go to the max of what a truck can tow um, unless I know that it's like a HD truck and it's kind of, you know, made for that, then I'll go with that direction. This truck, I think at 11,000, that's, that's a beast of a trailer for a half ton, but hell, maybe we'll do it. So if you guys don't mind, again, subscribe, like, and we'll see you on the next one.